Hello and welcome. You're watching Race to Power. My name is Mohammed Saleh. This, of course, is a big moment because Taiwan has spoken. The results of the much anticipated elections are now finally out, and the verdict isn't going to please the Chinese. The Taiwanese voters have swept the ruling Democratic Progressive Party's presidential candidate Lai Ching-te into power. And what this means is that China is not going to get its way with Taiwan anytime soon. And these are the images of the celebrations outside of the DPP's party office. Taiwan's victorious presidential candidate Lai ching te has vowed to defend the autonomously ruled island from any form of Chinese intimidation. And addressing supporters after his two opponents conceded defeat, Lai thanked the Taiwanese people for writing a new chapter in Taiwan's democratic process. We are telling the international community that between democracy and authoritarianism, we will stand on the side of democracy. Taiwan will continue to walk side by side with democracies from around the world. The lawyer who is currently the vice president has delivered an unprecedented third term for the DPP after a pretty raucous campaign in which he pitched himself as the defender of Taiwan's democratic way of life. Through our actions, the Taiwanese people have successfully resisted efforts from external forces to influence this election. We trust that only the people of Taiwan have the right to choose their president. Now, the European Union has welcomed Taiwan's presidential elections and the results and has congratulated all the Taiwanese voters. A reaction from China at this moment is still awaited. The Beijing, remember, has in the past slammed Lai, the current vice president, as a dangerous separatist. And on the eve of the vote, its defense ministry had vowed to crush any move towards Taiwanese independence. In an explicit rejection of China's warnings not to vote for him, in an election that Beijing had framed as a choice between war and peace. But what is quite abundantly clear is that the Taiwanese people have spoken and they've made it abundantly clear that they are backing Lai, a candidate of the DPP, who will again, it appears, withhold and continue with the policy of Tsai Ing wen and will uphold the independently governed nature of Taiwan. And also with the latest, we have our TVBS correspondent Vivian Shao, who's been tracking the story very closely for us and has sent us this report from Taipei. Listen in. In the wake of a historic victory in Taiwan's presidential election, President-elect Lai ching and Vice President-elect Xiao Mi Kim vowed on Saturday to follow in the footsteps of President Tsai Ing-wen. Addressing international media, Lai emphasized his steadfast commitment to democracy. He thanked his opponents for upholding democratic values and congratulated their parties, expressing eagerness to collaborate for Taiwan's future. This election, a focal point of the 2024 global democratic process, has been a testament to Taiwan's resilience against efforts to influence its democratic proceedings, he said. According to Lai, the results also demonstrate a clear preference for democracy over authoritarianism. More importantly, he stressed that as the president-elect, he has an important responsibility to maintain peace and stability in the Taiwan Strait. To this end, he promised to act in accordance with 
safeguard democratic and free constitutional order in a manner that is balanced and maintains the cross-strait status quo under the principles of dignity. I vow to use exchanges to replace obstructionism, dialogue to replace confrontation, and confidently pursue exchanges and cooperation with China. This will further the well-being of people on both sides of the Taiwan Strait and achieve our objective of peace and common prosperity, he continued. However, the legislative elections brought mixed results for the Democratic Progressive Party. The DPP acknowledged that they have failed to maintain a majority. Lai admitted the need for introspection and improvement, emphasizing the importance of an effective government that aligns with public expectations. In response to the new legislative structure, Lai stressed the importance of open communication, consultation, and cooperation. He plans to integrate the policies of his opponents into his policy framework, aiming to further Taiwan's national development and foster a more inclusive political environment. This is Vivian Xiao for TVBS World Taiwan. And also to give us more insights in terms of how this election, of course, is likely to play out both within Taiwan and also across the Taiwan Strait in China. We're being joined by Mr. Brian Ho, who's a founding editor of the New Bloom magazine. He's joining us live from Taipei. Mr. Ho, this, this is going to be an extremely a significant electoral victory here for Mr. Lai. And, and the fact that the DPP has managed to win the elections three t uh, on a trot is, is something that China would be watching very closely. Give us a sense of how much a factor China was in these elections in Taiwan. So what's interesting is the election shows the views of Chinese people regarding China, but it's a very narrow win. And the DPP did not win for its strengths on domestic policy per se, increasing pushback against the DPP for failing to address socioeconomic issues, for example, socioeconomic equality in particular. Uh, and so it won because it is the party that maintains defending Taiwan's sovereignty, whereas the KMT, the opposition, is a historically pro unification party. And so it did actually play a major role in that sense. And I think that uh, there was a lot of talk about how it's the only thing that, not the only thing Chinese people are voting on, the cross trade issue, is still very important. And also, Mr. Ho, you know, a lot of people would want to know. The international media has been covering this election, saying that, listen, there's a lot of rhetoric that has come in from China. China had, of course, you know, dubbed this election as a choice between peace and war for Taiwan. But for the local people within Taiwan, was it the China factor or were it the domestic issues, you know, such as employment, such as inflation? What actually played a bigger role in terms of how the, Chi how the Taiwanese people have decided which way they wanted to vote? It's hard to know because the success of somebody like uh, Koenja, the uh, candidate of the Taiwan People's Party, a newer third party, who historically framed himself as an independent, is a sign of how people are hoping for someone that is anti-establishment in some ways, uh, because his message was focused more on the economy. Uh, at the same time, it's a question. I mean, I think that domestic and international issues regarding cross-strait relations are very deeply interlinked, and each party, whether the, each major party, whether the DPP or KMT, part of their differing vision for Taiwan was actually regarding whether you want stronger trade links with China or with the Western world or with South Asian countries in the region, especially between China or uh, other past power for Taiwan's economy. That was also at stake. And it's a way in which domestic and international issues are linked for Taiwan. Thank you very much indeed, Ms. Brian Ho, for joining us and getting us all those insights there. And also to tell us a bit more about what the mood is like in Taiwan at this moment, we're being joined in by the TVBS reporter Dimitri Bruce, who's joining us from Taipei. Now, Bruce, I spoke with you a little while back and you told us about the mood this moment in Taiwan. The DPP has won for an unprecedented third term on a trot. You know, give us a sense of what the supporters of the DPP party are saying. What change do they expect from the president-elect Lai? Is he going to continue with the policies of Tsai Ing-wen or is there some kind of a change that we're going to witness under the new president? Well, well, during today's press conference, Lai Qingde's commitment to democracy extended beyond Taiwan's border. He underscored his critical role in preserving peace and stability in the Taiwan Strait. He wants to embrace the policy that is balanced and maintains the cross-strait status quo under the principles of dignity. Lai aims to foster a relationship with China that fosters dialogue and cooperation instead of confrontation. 
That's very he believes this approach will enhance the well-being of the Taiwanese people uh, and, and the Chinese people as well, ultimately leading to, uh, to peace and a shared prosperity. And this is a, a challenging goal, actually, knowing that the ruling DPP has been unable to build trust with Beijing so far. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, uh, China has continued to reinforce its military buildup with, uh, with increased pressure in the South China Sea to deter other nations from intervening in the eventuality of a conflict. Now, to establish dialogue, China could ask the ruling DPP to acknowledge the 1992 consensus, which is absolutely uh, unacceptable to the president-elect. Right. Now, it's a bit, again, a bit early to, to know exactly um, how and, and the way and how and when he will approach uh, China with his new policy. As I said earlier, uh, he will take office in May. So he has a couple of months to go to understand, maybe to reach to Washington and before right. uh, maybe extending an olive branch to China. Very interesting there. Now, before this election happened, we heard a lot of rhetoric from China. China dubbed this election as a choice between war and peace, a choice between prosperity and decline for the Taiwanese people. But since the election results have come out, have we heard anything from Beijing? Because Beijing has described the president-elect in Taiwan as, as a dangerous separatist. Absolutely. But again, it's a bit early to know and to, to expect a response from Beijing. I think they've planned their response for some time. They had an understanding of how things were going uh, prior to the election. Now, maybe earlier next week on Monday or Tuesday, at the regular uh, press brief briefing by the MOFA in Beijing, we might learn more about how they plan to respond. On the short term, let's say tomorrow morning, uh, let's see whether there are plans, fighter jets flying, um, you know, crossing the median line between Taiwan and China, uh, the median line of the Taiwan Strait. It's usually an indication how things usually go in Taiwan. So we'll watch closely uh, tomorrow morning uh, whether planes venture, you know, a bit too far from the median right. line. And then from there, we might that might give us an indication uh, how they will respond officially on Monday or Tuesday. I think that'll be very interesting to watch out for us to have the Chinese fighter jets, of course, behave near the median line. Uh, and also, Bruce, tell us a bit about, you know, this, this aspect where China says that Taiwan's reunification with mainland China, they claim, is a historic inevitability. This is something that even Xi Jinping has said over and over again. But on the other hand, the Taiwanese say that they want to maintain the status quo as it exists, that they want to have themselves be governed autonomously in a democratic form of a setup. Why does China have an issue with Taiwan so long as it does not declare independence? Well, it's a long story, actually. It has to do with history. Um, in Chinese history, whenever China was divided, China was weak. And the strongest dynasty over the past 2,000 years were or managed to unify the whole China. And then for the Chinese leadership, because they, they follow, they skip actually the story of the Republic of China, the People's Republic of China sees itself in the continuity of this Chinese history. And they believe, they hardly and strongly believe that a unification will make, the unification will make China stronger. The problem is in Taiwan, they see themselves in a totally different light nowadays. In the old days under the KMT leadership, um, the story of a unified China made a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Nowadays in a democratic Taiwan, where young people identify themselves more as Taiwanese than Chinese, right. the story and this, uh, you know, the long history of China doesn't make, for the young people, it's not relevant anymore. And so, um, they're, they're not uh, talking to each other. They're talking now past each other. Right. And, and, and that's, that's where the risk of confrontation is. They see a different future, um, but um, it's, it's a most, uh, almost impossible now to bring them 
back to the discussion table. Absolutely indeed. And also, uh, Bryce, tell us a bit about, you know, why this result of these elections in the legislature is a bit of a mix, mixed bag for the Democratic People's Party. Absolutely. Well, to, to push for its agenda um, to reform Taiwan and, you know, beyond those cross-trade issues, uh, Taiwan faces a lot of challenges and young people in Taiwan uh, are asking for, you know, better salaries. They want better, um, you know, they want to be able to buy a house like in, in, in many countries. And to push for this, to push for these reforms, you need a strong majority at the legislative UN. So that's the good news, or maybe uh, for the DPP it might sound not like a good news, but the good news is I think they will need to talk to the opposition parties and find what? and try to build a consensus around policies. Uh, the mentality in Taiwan is still the winner takes all. Mm -hmm. Usually there isn't much, uh, they, they don't discuss policies in advance. They right. usually, I don't know if you've seen those uh, images of confrontation at the parliament in Taiwan, which is uh, we see very often. Right. So we hope, and I personally hope that in the near future, there will be more discussions, negotiation, and concertation on important policies. And um, these, uh, the young people really are looking forward to these reforms. Absolutely. Now, also, uh, when it comes to cross race relations or U.S.-Taiwan relations, mm -hmm. maybe having more discussions at the legislative UN could right. be a good thing too. So I'm looking forward to this, and this is important for Taiwan's democracy. I think that's that's a very significant point there. Bryce, do continue to stay on with this because I would want you to weigh in on a couple of other aspects as well. But first, let's take a look at the DPP candidate, the man who's now the president-elect, Lai ching Te, who's now all set to become the next president of Taiwan. The Lai is from the ruling party and is currently the vice president. So let's take a look at his career, at the graph of his political career and how he's reached the position where he is. <laughs> Legislator, Mayor, Taiwan's Premier and current Vice President. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.